So this week we have reached 16 years of marriage. Yeah. Can you believe it? What made you remember? You don't ever remember the date. <laughs> I don't, but I do now because my friend got married on the second. So oh, that's now nice. I remember. So their wedding, their wedding anniversary will yeah. remind you of ours. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice, but ours is sufficient. So can you believe it? I can't even believe I'm over sixteen years old. I know it's unfathomable, isn't it? Um, if somebody's just starting out, has just got married. I suppose when you just get married, you think, oh, well, I've done this because I've done this for life, and then you go through the first year, second year, third year of marriage, you're thinking, bloody hell, I'd be lucky if I make it to four or five years, I, I let mean, alone life. On, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I suppose I've never been married before, so I never think of it. I, I, the idea of being married for 16 years seemed like the pre preserve of grandparents. Yeah. Not even the preserve of parents, because what parents stay together? I, I mean, when I think about it, I'm, I'm actually, like... If you were watching me on YouTube, not listening to the podcast, you would see like pennies trying to drop in my head because I literally can't believe it. It's such a big number, 16 years. It's massive. It makes me feel quite proud though, does it you? Um, yeah, no, I, no I, well, I mean, obviously I feel proud about what we've come through and how yeah. we've got here and more importantly, the status of how we are with each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think I hear of, lots of people who are married for a long period of time and then I look at the details of the marriage and I think is it anything to be particularly proud of <laughs> because yeah. or it feels dead around yeah 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 absolutely or you look at it and you think oh my god you know I mean I think my worst dread I mean you know I only had one role model as a, of a long-term marriage and that was my grandparents and it was towards well towards the end I mean I never saw any affection between them it was a, a different generation I get that mm. but you know I'm See, like, I still do with my mum and dad. So lucky with that. Well, you you have a really strong long term role model, and they like children together. And they still. live next door. But they like children together. There's a fizz yeah. about them both. That's yeah. there's a child there's a childlike playfulness about them both, which keeps them young. And I'm not I'm not saying clearly they won't have had a smooth ride all the way through. But God no, they drive each other mad. They irritate yeah. by each other. They bicker, but their relationship is still alive they rise to it and they are a great team in that my dad wants to be the showman mm. but my mum's there gently sort of holding that up the whole time isn't it and they're very funny so how does that work with us because we're both a bit showmany and we both hold each other up well i mean um i mean i suppose you don't always have to parallel I think sometimes you struggle okay i'm going to ask you a question now that you might find a bit odd what? God, he dreads this. Uh, it's just come to me and I thought, why don't uh, I just ask him as we've gone down to the showman? Because honestly, guys, we don't prepare these at all, what we're going to say. We'll just say, like today, let's just talk about our 16th anniversary. We've got no idea what we're going to ask each other. So on the showman thing, I sometimes... Lip. It's got something on your lip. Uh, I sometimes wonder on, whether, because I'm off the telly and because... As we know, often people will come up to me and stuff in the street. Whether that's been an irritation through 16 years. Because, of course, for me it's just so normal. Because we weren't together when I was in EastEnders and that just had such huge viewing figures. And mm. So for me, everything has been calmer since EastEnders. Mm. But what is it actually like for you? Well, I don't see that as a... Well... I think at the beginning it was difficult because there was a lot of press interest. And then... The public are always very, very friendly and, you know, mm. people become up very respectful. I mean, I think there are times where I do remember about, God, this, I mean, this is very vivid. I remember about three or four years ago, for some reason, me and the girls going out for something to eat in Anando's, I think. And as we went in to sit down, it must have been at a particular time where you'd been in the press a lot for something, I don't know what. And as we went in, Maddie remarked, she said, isn't it nice not to be looked at? Oh, as we no, walked into a restaurant. No, no, I'm not saying, but she, she didn't say it sadly. She said, but isn't it nice? And we sat down and we were silly as a family. Oh, that makes and me we really were silly. Sad. Well, yeah, it's an honest answer there. Mm. And we sat down and we were silly as a family, but we were silly anonymously. Yeah. So there was no worry that, you know, oh God, could someone take a photo? Oh God, could that hit the press? Oh God, you know, people are going to point and look. Or The, the people coming up isn't, isn't, isn't ever the problem because they're always very respectful. And I do, the, I do what I call the Prince Philip, where I sort of step to the side. <laughs> And let people talk to you. Um, and they're always very lovely. But, I mean, in terms of on yeah. a more... 
it's just a little question yeah. in the midst of 16 years as we look back over 16 years. I mean, was... one can never forget it. I suppose that we get used to it. You just get yeah. used to it. Um, I mean, I often say, it's very funny because sometimes if Nadia wants to go out and want, we want to do something as a couple and, you know, even Nadia wants to be a sort of bit more inconspicuous or conspicuous um, and not noticed, you never sort of tell your voice that. So you may sort of pop on some shades and a cap sometimes just to kind of be able to, you know, submerge yourself into sort of, I don't know, the meat department of, uh, of Asda's or something. But you, uh, but then you start talking and it's like, well, oh, bloody hell, you may as well just have a great big sign over your head saying, Nadia Sawala here. Um, but that's so not really... So what else yeah. looking at over 16 years? Well, I mean, years. the biggest problem for us over the 16 years has obviously been issues around alcoholism and what have you. Uh, depression. I mean, I think well, I, don't, I don't really want to say around alcoholism because you've been sober for fifteen years. Yeah. I think I think it's not it's not because you don't because people might think that we mean by that that it's drinking and it's not drinking. It's it's the dealing the stuff that's drinking. made you drink. Yeah, and dealing with not drinking and mm. being part of a couple where the whole world is revolves around drink and you know. I think what you I'd wouldn't like... go to a party, a barbecue, an afternoon meet up. You wouldn't go to anything without alcohol being. A part yeah, I mean, of I think, it in this country. I think it's a whole other podcast, friends and socialising. But I do feel sad over the 16 years that we haven't been able to, or I haven't been able to, for you in a sense, be more easy in social situations or the, the ability to go to them. And the reason I say that, and I think that's important in terms of looking at one's relationship, because I think a huge part of one's relationship is how... It's seen, it's seen by, I don't mean by the public mm, or the press, yeah. but seen by others and yeah. how you function around But I'm watching and... your partner in another situation yeah. with other people, and I do, I, I, I miss that. that I mean, I'd obviously, I mean, there's no shortage of me seeing you engage with people, whether it be on telly, whether it be, you have a very busy social life and a very busy uh, and, ve and very good friendship circle. So, you know, I've sort of made this decision slightly in my life, and it makes me a bit sad that that's your thing. You're the social one. You're the sociable one. You're the... And Which you know, isn't I, true. It's when your I, when thing When I struggled too. with it in the past, the idea, you know, there was, there was, and what I mean by the alcoholism, there was a period of time where I, and I'm sure this happens with a lot of relationships, where one member of the couple is perhaps a little bit more socially anxious and almost resents the other one being able to do it so easily and go out so much. And I know that I've made you at times feel bad perhaps about doing things that you've wanted to do and I certainly haven't wanted to, but it's actually been because I really wish I could step over the threshold and join you in them. So if I look back over the 16 years, I think that's not something I, I, I don't think I could have changed it. And I, I don't necessarily think it's gonna change massively in my future life. And it brings me great sadness, but, um, yeah, I suppose when I look at it like that, I do sort of sometimes think we're very lucky that we're as strong as we are, given that I'm as isolating and uh, solitary and as uh, withdrawn as I can be. And of course, people that know you online will be sitting there going, Mark. Well, no, I know, but Because I... you're hugely sociable, you're hugely entertaining. But it, it, but it is a form you, of defence. Everything is always better when you're there. Everything is always more no. fun if you're there. You, This is an idea of an idea of, your, of yourself that you have that isn't actually true. No, it is you true. Know, anybody you know the that feeling looks, of feeling that, but no, sounding but something else. Anybody, very few people that look socially confident are no, totally I get socially confident. I, get that. I actually am very socially awkward as well. Mm. But I, what I am is a really good actress. Mm. So I act my way through it. And you're the same. No, 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 and no, I no, fake but... it to make it all the time. Like, even if it's somebody coming around that I know really well, I get a bit anxious. Mm. Kiki was saying this to me the other day, this our 10 year old. We were having this conversation, and, and I said to her, she, she was going to a friend's, and I said, Oh, are you excited? And as we know, over the years, Kiki's had a lot of sort of worry and anxiety herself. And she said, well, I, I, she says, I am, but I'm a little bit worried too. And I said, and that never changes. Mm. That doesn't change. Mm. You know, you are the life and soul of the party. I mean, you've only got to look, you, what you should do is sometimes, I know this sounds really sad, but sometimes I click on our YouTube videos we've done together and I'm laughing out loud at no, you. No, 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 I get that. But no, I mean, no, but this but your is sister, something Your sister in Julia your used to say this, there's something about me that's a little bit, I'm a bit of a bit of an idiot, 
I'm a bit of a moron. In, and she always meant it in the nicest possible way. She said, you're a bit, you're a bit weird, you're a bit stupid. Yeah, but aren't bit... we all? Yeah, no, I know, but I mean, I suppose I just... I mean, I've been a dad for 23 years, so it's, it's a kind of extension of being silly. And you're the, the fun one. And well, I'm the miserable yeah. one. Yeah but, in, uh, yeah, but me and you know that behind the curtains, behind the scenes, that there's a very different set of things going on. I also do know that about you. When people ask yeah. me about you, I know that I say... Yeah, but, but exactly behind it, everybody's seen there is that. Yeah. Well, I suppose when I look at our relationship, from... but it has had an impact on how much we've gone out together. Yeah, but from my POV, it is hugely frustrating for me hmm. because you will shy away. The word shy, when somebody's shy, is to shy away, to pull back. I'm worried and you're out of shot as you shy I'm not, away. I'm not. I'm perfectly in the middle of the shot. Mm. As you shy away, sometimes I do, if I'm honest, want to just bang your head against the wall. Mm, sure. And I want to say to you, and I have said to you, for God's sake, man. You know, I don't know anyone that's cleverer than you. I, know, I don't know anyone. Shut up. I don't want to You've hear just this. You've spoken. <laughs> I'm gonna, well, this is the problem, though, isn't it? You don't want to hear. No. There's no one cleverer but we're than you. We're looking... No, there's no one funnier than you. I've never seen you be asked a question by a prince or pauper that you couldn't answer. You know, so for you to be socially awkward is very, very frustrating because I'm a blagger. I'm a fake. I don't really... Yeah, I went into I... work the other day and they, they were all like... I went into the meeting and they said, at least women, and they said, are you all right? I went, no. So I'm not. I was walking down the street and I suddenly got hit by this epiphany that I am a total fraud. So like, what can I really do? What really am I? What, what am I presenting to my friends, to my family, to in, in whatever show I do? Who the bloody... And I had such a crisis of confidence. I didn't even want to walk into work. Mm. You know, so, so don't, don't think for a minute I don't know how about how all that fits. and I do sometimes get really frustrated when I'll say to you come to this thing and you just go oh no and I just want to say over 16 years old, can't you just force yourself sometimes for me can't you just force yourself and just go yeah okay just breezily go yeah okay it is always a bloody nightmare mm. Well, that was a sort of turnaround. You went from being really compassionate to being really yeah, pissed off. It's compassionate because <laughs> I know how brilliant you are. And no, it's I know. so annoying. And <clears> I think <throat> sometimes, you know, what do they say in, in all recovery? You know, put yourself in the service of others. Oh, yeah, I sometimes what you could do for me is go, do you know what? I'm actually not going to think about how difficult this might be for me. Or how, I'm just going to, and I think a lot of women will actually identify with this. I don't think it's just about A or anything. Yeah, no. I think that men tend to more often go, do you know what, I'm not going to get, and they pull away from it. And so, so many women are out on their own because their partner won't, won't, won't push through the embarrassment or the social awkwardness of just initially walking through a door and not knowing anyone. And I would never do that but with you. Fair, Anything you ask me to, to I would go fair, to it. To be, to be fair, there is often this thing, though, where for men, there is an underlying knowledge that women tend to do this slightly sort of, let's congregate in a corner as a gaggle of women and we'll do our thing. Now, as a man who doesn't drink, it's incredibly hard to be sectioned off with the men partners of everyone you know when you can't have a drink. Can I just say one thing? I 100% agree to that. You know, but that, that tends what to I'm happen. Saying women is, tend to... What I'm saying women... is, twice a year, or once well, a year, you could say yes to me. That's year. all I'm saying. Yeah. And you never will. That's it's not like, true. It's because if I'm going to something and I have to think, I get all, like, churning in my stomach, I've got to say to Mark, because... Because... And then, and then he'll get... Because the thing is, if I didn't say to you, come to stuff, you would feel left out of stuff. But then you won't. But then you won't ever push yourself and and do it. And well, come. I think I think we should like hold this for another another podcast because the whole social socialising thing I think is a thing. I think it's a really big it's a thing. big thing. But I'd I mean, really I really like. Could you actually? Do you know what would be a good idea, Mark? Is but if we're we said talking to people, about sixteen years of yeah, marriage. If we said to people, but this has been a big thing through sixteen years. No, no, no. no but can I just say, as a comeback to your very sort of, I could feel how cross you were getting. No, I wasn't. Cross. When you're when one is out. Yes, you get. Yes, everyone gets social anxiety, but then other people get it. You also have the constant crutch of even if you don't have a drink, you can have a drink. You have any. You have everything and anything at your fingertips to ease a situation. Most most often of all, being you know most people in these situations. I have no connection with them, and when you have added social anxiety to that 
for a range of whatever reasons you want to call it, standing in a room feeling like your skin is blistering. I ask you to stand in a room no, 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 with a no, load I'm talking about not asking that you ask me to. That's how it feels to See, me. We, this was supposed to the be a prospect, celebration of 16 The years. prospect of standing in a room with complete strangers, not saying that the partners of any of them are, 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 are not nice. They are nice, but they're, they're in their own space, but they can all have a drink and have a chinwag about stuff. I can't. It's very hard. And... I would rather run for the hills. Now, when I know that my wife, I get that you're disappointed by that. I've just expressed how disappointed I am that I can't do that. But there are certain limitations that we all have. I don't think disappointed is the right word. If you're looking over 16 years of marriage, it is a thing that Mm. has been in our marriage. Mm. And it's not that I'm disappointed in you. I am frustrated for you because I never go to anywhere without you would have been the best person there. That's all I'm saying. So over 16 years of marriage, when I think of the many occasions where I've been at things and you haven't been there, and I've wanted you there because I know you'd be the most entertaining person, that makes me sad for you as much as for me. Yeah, but I think, I, miss... trying, I think you're always transposing the entertaining person I can be in the comfort zone of being around people I'm comfortable with. I mm. can't be that with strangers. Yeah, I'm... but sometimes this is even with comfortable people, people you're comfortable with. Well, yeah, I get that. I understand that. I'm not talking about a great big room. Listen, how often do I go to things like Look. that? I hate Look. events. If I'm going, I hate here's the red thing. Carpet I, stuff. I, have I been, hate all that stuff. I have stuff. been in some of the most stress. You know, I've met every head of every channel in the country and I can sit and I can engage. Exactly. With them. Yeah, but the only reason I can engage with them is because I'm in a professional capacity talking about the mm. professional thing at hand. I have an agenda. I am good on my agenda. I'm good at my job. I know I can do all of that. Mm. Soon as I'm in the social world of chit chat, it f- fills me with absolute dread. This is a really, really good podcast. Could you? Because what would be great is if you guys leave comments below, if you identify with this or your partner does, um, because I think it's a really but good. Co- I a promise really good you, it's topic. not a willful. I know, oh, sweetheart. Yeah. No, no, no. But just as the, as you were saying it there, you, you're very colourful in your language, and so suddenly it sort of began to sound like I'm sitting there going, you know, you could just once or twice. Yeah, you're right. On paper, it does sound like I could just once or twice step out of my comfort zone, be of service. I'm saying to everyone in my life, my children, people who are close to me, who I care about, who are struggling, be of service. It's a way of helping. Mm. But then there are also things where I know that putting my hand in a burning fire is so painful, I can't do it. And at that point, no, but I'm saying, I mean, I'm not even sad about that bit. I'm just saying, I'm saying it's the prospect of it sometimes is truly, truly, truly horrendous. So let's move on to something else in our 16 years of marriage. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I tell you what, I mean, I do think about 16 years of marriage. I think there's a social pressure and this is something else. I thought we weren't going to talk about this anymore. The social (laughs) precisely. No, no, I'm talking about different social pressure. Oh, right. So society-wise, uh. there's a societal pressure, and I hear it sometimes from women of a certain age. What does that mean? Well, it means women, who, women over 50. Right, okay. Um, or who, who have been in long-term relationships. And it's, it's something I hear, and it's something I guard against, and it's something that always worries me as, as a slightly younger man, but in a long-term relationship and wanting to How stay in How much younger than me are you? Six years. <laughs> um, but you, there's this idea of tolerating or suffering a relationship. and the, yeah. the, the, So when I hear we've been married for 16 years, I don't feel it's something I'm proud of saying to people. Why? I feel that if I was to say it in a group of people to women, people more often than not would arch their eyebrow and go, oh, crikey. It's like a life sentence. But it's like that. It's like when men go, oh, well, you get longer for life. It's exactly. Sort of that, no, no, no. But there, there's a similar sensibility that comes from women. Sorry, lot, you get longer for murder. Not there's an assumption or, or there's, a, there's a language that's used that's kind of like, oh, well, I've been with, been with him for that long. Oh, I and couldn't so, bear to be with somebody if I felt that way. I really so, couldn't. Yeah, but I find that, so for me, when I hear 16 years of marriage, it doesn't automatically go, oh, isn't that an amazing thing? Oh, God, that's great. I go, oh, God, it's something that needs to be explained away. We need to illustrate Gee. illustrate the fact that actually we're not like most people who've been oh, married God. for 16 years, because most people, you know, it's like, well, the kids... Do you really think The that? kids say that a lot of their friends aren't in, you know, some of their friends' parents aren't particularly happy together. No, but hang on, just rewind, because I didn't quite get that. So you... Because I say, wow, I've been married 16 years. And it's like, wow, God, that's a surprise. It's I'm lovely. proud of it, and I think it's amazing. But I would not go around publicising it. Oh, God, how interesting. Hmm. 
Because I get, I, I, I see either in men a sort of arched eyebrow of, you must have had an affair, or oh my God, I'm sorry. Oh, and, you? and you get from women a sort of, well, a, yeah, I don't know, you just sort of get a... Well, the majority of men would have that attitude if you said it, do you think? Yeah, they'd see it as a punishment, not as a, an attribute. Really? Yeah. A lot of people I've worked with, yeah, absolutely. And, they, you know, and a lot of them are in shorter term relationships and they can't even hold that down. Mm, how sad. So, you know, 16 years of marriage for me, when I hear it, it sounds, I, I sort of, I get hooked on what, what those sort of men and people would, would sort of say of it, which is, oh, that's a bit dull, isn't it? Gosh, 16 years with the same person. Yeah. And if I think back to when I was 20, I would never, ever have imagined I'd been, been with someone, not married even, but been with someone for longer than, the longest relationship I had before you was six years. It's still quite long. Well, it's still quite a long man. verse. Well, I mean, it's a 16. And so when I then... You have a long relationship When I person, chuck though. the numbers aside and then I cut back to us being, say, oh, out on our, on our anniversary night, I genuinely want to be with you. I genuinely enjoy being with you. You're a great friend. We laugh. We also bicker. I mean, I suppose the bickering is we hard. We fight like hell. We fight like hell. I mean, I would, something I would, I would say is that the, the arguments have less of a rumbling build-up now. You just go to DEFCON 20 straight away sometimes about the slightest things. And you, it's just like flipping out. I said mallet to, to crush a nut. No, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you will think I go straight to DEFCON, but I've been suppressing it and then I blow. Yeah. So. But then, but I think we're much better because we recover a lot quicker. We don't have a week of hardly talking to each other, which is what we used mm. to be like. I think that the, one of the major ingredients to it lasting as long as it has, has been a capacity to say sorry and admit you're wrong. I mean, I think, I mean, I think you underestimate, or one underestimates how many People members don't. of a couple, cu how many halves of a couple just refuse to acknowledge that they ever do it. I mean, I know people in my family refuse to ever acknowledge that they were wrong. So like, how can you go through life never thinking you're wrong? Right. That in itself is wrong. It's very isolating that, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, so for me... I like that about you, and I think it's good that we like that with our children as well. We will say, oh, do well, you know what? Because I think that's where it starts. So, you know, if you're stuck in a marriage with somebody that never says sorry and you're bringing up kids together, you know, make sure that you teach your kids that you can because otherwise we're just sending more women and men and women out into the world no, that will never... And that, I think, is the root of where so many marriages go wrong. Mm. So many marriages go wrong because nobody is ever... is in a constant state of battle with, no, with people wanting to win. Yeah. And what's that saying from that film? Better to be kind than be right. Yeah. It's a great, this, this, is, um, this is a quote from a movie that the guys saw earlier in the year. And I think this year of our marriage, it's, I can think of quotes through our marriage that have got me through and got us through. And um, this year, I think that's one I've used thought of a lot. Better to be kind than to be wrong. What you, and you can diffuse in yourself an argument that you feel coming. Mm. Well, what does it matter, actually? So what, you're gonna go with this, you're gonna have a big row, why don't you just not go with this? Because mm. actually, does it matter that much? Mm. Actually, Mark's a really good person. Yeah, he's pissing you off today, but God, you know, so what? He won't tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I think like that a lot more with you, rather than trying to win. I mean, even however trying to however win. fair a person you are, there are some times where you feel an injustice in a row and you want to Absolutely. dig in for it. So, But there are some times, even with an unjust row, where, you know, actually, the shared journey here is that we like each other and love each other and we want the better, best for all of us. So why, why, why pursue it? Is it amazing how through marriage, though, you can, like, we have the, the, you know, the defining thing is we like each other and we love each other, but sometimes I hated you so much, and I think if you're struggling today and you're listening to this podcast, it is possible to go to, from hating somebody because they're driving you so crazy to just getting back to exactly how you felt mm -hmm. before about them. And I think you would say the same, you know, it's I would. possible. I would. But you have to be able to go, okay, I don't want this to continue forever. So in the 16 years that we've been together, do you, would you say that we love each other more now than we did? Yes. Or do you? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There is a sort of... It's different, isn't it? You have different stages of love, but mm. to say I love you more, maybe that's... I hate you less. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's really nice. Well, no, because I've always it. loved you, but there was so much arguing, wasn't there, in the early days? Uh, there'd be a lot of time uh, of just going, oh, God, I wish you'd just go away. Or I wish, you know, and that. And, and so, of course, the love is allowed more because I'm not having those, mm. those days. So the love's the same, 
but it's not, but it's more often. Okay. Who said romance is dead? What would you say to that question? No, I'd say, I'd say that our relationship, I mean, I, I still fancy you as much. I still feel the same. I feel, it's funny, I, I often say that because we had Maddie so early on that the honeymoon period in our relationship was put on pause almost within three or four months. <laughs> uh, and I sometimes feel that that's a huge benefit. I would say almost my advice would be is, you know, if you could, if you could somehow construct a way in most marriages where you put on pause the honeymoon period, when you get back to it some years later, it can sort of still have its no, same intensity. No, everyone can do that though. Sometimes no, it's, it's just hard. gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do worry. How, what happens if you just wake up one morning and it's gone? I mean, you do say, like, hear you talking to the girls about with boyfriends when you get the ick, and I'm like, what the hell is this ick? How do I know that the ick won't just hit her one day? It's like a, it's like a sort of Sophocles waiting over me. It's like, what well, if she gets the ick, and I don't even know why she's got the ick. Well, that'll keep you on your toes, won't it, for the next 16 yeah, years. That makes me feel really Make anxious. sure I never get the ick. Makes me feel really anxious. Yeah. I love you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> I feel really, feel really ick now.